guys welcome back to my channel so this video is going to be a little bit different than my usual stuff it's not fandom related it's personal to me or it's it's part of my life basically so for those that don't know or haven't seen my autism diagnosis thing which if you haven't i will leave a link down below and also in the card just up here I was diagnosed with autism last year, in 2021, and suffice to say it's changed my life, you know, going 22 years thinking that, you know, feeling like there's, there's something not right, but you're not sure on what it is, well, we now know what it is. So I have found these questions on the internet on questions you've always wanted to ask a person with autism. Now this was an interview done with somebody else but I'm going to use these questions and turn them on myself. So the first one is why is it hard for people with autism to communicate? Hmm. That's an interesting one. I think for me personally, put me, give me a phone and people all around the world. If it's about my fandoms, I can talk for hours. I'm good. You know, that's my comfort zone. Online, talking about things I like. Put me in a actual physical social environment, whether that's with family or in the university environment, and I'm I shy away. I go into myself. I would rather sit with my headphones in and talk to people online than talk to somebody that sat opposite me or next to me. Socialising is just hard. For people with autism, for me personally, it's hard because there's a lot of these thoughts going through my head thinking, I don't know what to say, I'm going to say the wrong thing, they're going to think I'm an idiot, etc, etc. Just going to, there we go. So that, that's my personal reason on why it's hard to communicate. Obviously for people with autism, because autism is so varied, it's going to be different. So if you have a different reason on why you think it's hard for a person with autism to communicate, comment down below with your thoughts. So the next one, links to the first one, does this mean you don't get irony or sarcasm? Yes. If you struggle with communication, you're not going to understand when somebody's joking. I personally found this, a couple of people have said something, I take an offence at it and it wasn't meant in the way that I took it. It was meant as a joke, but because of my autism, I didn't say that. So that was a very short one, wasn't it? <laughs> Moving on. Is it hard for you to make eye contact? If so, why? This links with the first one in that it, again, it's a social side of it so like with communicating being able to make eye contact with a complete stranger very very difficult I mean it I still I've been at university for three years but I've actually just graduated um but I found in those three years seeing a lot of the same people I still can't make eye contact with people that I've known for three years. Like these people are not strangers anymore. But because of my autism, I just I, I just can't do it. I don't know why. It's no, I'm just before I move on to the next question. I think with eye contact, you can do it if you feel comfortable with the person you're with. Like if it's somebody that you're really close with, it's going to be easier. It's going to be easier to make con eye contact with your family. 
not with a complete stranger that you've known 24 hours. Okay, next one. Can you read facial expressions? No. No. Nope. And there isn't really a reason as to why. It's just... I mean, you can tell by people's tone of voice how they're feeling, but as somebody with autism, again, that's something I struggle with. It's it's one of those things. It's just not something that that I personally can do. I don't know. So linking on to that, do you ever offend anyone? I'm not going to lie. Yes, there have been times where something I've said didn't come out the way I meant it to so it came out that I was being offensive when actually I wasn't so it, and that that can be a challenge especially for somebody that's never associated with somebody with autism or never interacted with an autistic person because autism is like I've said before it's so varied so bear that in mind if you meet somebody with autism so, next one. What about relationships? Are they hard? They can be. I mean, f for me, I am very, very, very picky about who I trust in my personal life. But that's stemmed from childhood as well. So I don't think that's entirely autism linked. But at the same time, I think it is. Especially like with family that I don't see that often. It's harder to maintain a relationship with them as opposed to family that I see quite regular. And friends are just... All my friends are online, so... I have quite a good relationship with, with the people I speak to online. Okay, sorry about that guys, my camera cut off. Um, I don't remember what I was saying, but I'm going to move on to the next question. This video is kind of all over the place, and if you can hear background noise, it's because my mum and sister have come upstairs. So, that's what that is, if you can hear anything, which I will find out when I edit this video together. So, next question. Do you get sensory overload? Not really. I mean, my I do have, I have sensitive hearing. So, children screaming, or just anyone screaming, like high-pitched. I mean, as a fangirl, I do that anyway, but if it's anybody else doing it, I'm like that, a couple of my ears. Um, sirens, so ambulance, police, fire, fire engine, sensors, sensitive to those. Fire alarm, I know the fire alarm has to be loud, so everyone hears it, but... For me personally, it's just a no. I'm just being in a room full of people that I don't know if that's sensory, but that definitely triggers my anxiety, that's for sure. So, what does sensory overload feel like? That's an that that's an interesting one. I don't really know. I don't I don't know how how to describe it. It's It's kind of like, okay, I'll describe it if I'm having, if I'm at the top of my tree, if it's, if everything's just too much. It's like, like I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders and it just feels like one thing after another, after another, after another, after another. It's just all too much. My head, it feels like my head just wants to explode and I just want to curl up under the duvet and just tell the world to go away basically so then it just all comes out full on meltdown it's like my brain's way of saying no that's it I've had enough no okay next one do you need to stick to routine yes I hate when it's Christmas holidays half term Easter holidays especially the longest one for me is summer I hate it so much because it's there's no routine there's no stability 
so I have to kind of have my own routine which if you want to see day in the life of somebody with autism give the video a big thumbs up and comment down below if you guys want to see that I don't know um but yeah sticking to a routine definitely it's it's always in me I mean even just something as simple as planning my clothes for the week having everything top trousers underwear literally for, for seven days not the same thing obviously but you know something has to be done I even I organize my underwear so yeah no, it's literally just paired up socks and and I could just paired up so I can just grab them, put them with my clothes, and that's it. One up, bit done. So, what annoying questions do people ask you about autism? Nobody's really asked me, but a couple of questions I have heard are things like, were you born with it? Is it going to go away? Are you going to get better from it? Can you... Can, People have asked, can you catch it? Is it a disease? Were you born with it? Yes. Everyone that has autism is usually born with it. Uh, growing out of it? Nope. You have it for life. Once once you have that diagnosis, you've got it for the rest of your life. Uh, will you get better from it? No. I mean, you can learn. Learn to adapt, adapt to your surroundings, but getting better from it? No. Is it a disease? No, it isn't. Autism is a disability. It is a learning disability that you cannot see. It's what people know, better know it as an invisible disability. Because you can, if somebody's in a wheelchair, you can see that. Somebody has autism. You can't see that, because it's all up here, in your head. Can you catch it? No, you can't. It's not like a cold. No. You have to be born. Right, okay. Third time trying this. My camera cut off again. And again, because it's cut off, I don't remember what I was saying. So I'm just going to move on. To the next question, do you like having autism? It's a, it's a tricky one. It it's it's part of who I am, you know. Can't change it. Can't wave a magic wand, you know. I mean, I've got got my wands up here. You can't actually see them. I've got um Harry Potter ones. I can't wave one of them. And wish that my autism didn't exist. You know, turn back the clock and wish that I wasn't born with it. No, can't do that. You just, you, you just learn to accept it. There's, there's advantages to it. And there are disadvantages. Uh, di disadvantages to having autism. And if you want me to go into more detail on those, comment down below and give the video a big thumbs up. Last question, I think it's the last question, yep. What's one thing you want to say about people with autism? Don't ever say that we can't do something. Just don't. Because I, personally, am living proof that people with autism can do things. We can go to university. We can get a degree, get a job have a life people with autism can do that stop saying that they can't stop stereotyping that people with autism are stupid or not intelligent or whatever whatever the stereotypes are because whatever the stereotypes are take it from somebody that has autism they're not true so I hope that video was informative. If you want any more videos on autism, give the video a big thumbs up, comment down below your video ideas.
suggest them to me on Instagram, whatever you want to do. I'll see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys next time.